I greet you in Jesus' precious name. It's Christmas time again. The season of Christmas reminds me of one word, giving. It's a time for giving. Yes, it's a time for receiving, but it's mainly a time for giving. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's Jesus Christ. That whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. Probably the most famous single Bible verse in the whole Bible. But I want to read the Christmas story to you because it's always so special to me. So if you have your Bibles with you, your agricultural handbook, and you've got that hot cup of coffee or cup of tea, please join me and let's have Christmas together. I'm going to read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. You see, in those days, if a young virgin became pregnant without being married, she could be stoned. And Joseph loved Mary, and he didn't want that to happen. Verse 20. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph... Son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Verse 24, Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife. And he did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. What a beautiful story. Can you imagine? You know, that's why I say to people, you cannot, you cannot believe this Bible if you have no faith. Because it is impossible for a young woman to conceive and become pregnant without knowing a man. It can't happen. Ask any gynecologist. Yet it happened because of the archangel Gabriel who told Joseph that that baby in your fiancé has come from God. And it was foretold many, many hundreds of years ago in the Scriptures. It is so exciting to be a Christian, especially in these days in which we are living. When you say to me, many of you write to me saying, Angus, what are we going to do? Things are getting dark and gloomy and worse. We look overseas. The, even in the first world nations, there's, um, there's murder, there's destruction, there's racial hatred, ethnic cleansing, there's sickness, there's disease. What's happening to the world? Well, Jesus reminded us 
in John chapter 16 and verse 33. He says, these things I've told you. In me, you'll have peace. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And uh, that's why we celebrate Christmas. Because the good news is, the worse it gets, the closer the return of Jesus becomes. Jesus says, and I'm a farmer, I can understand the way he talks. He says, when you see a fig tree producing new leaves, you know that spring is on its way. And when you see these signs around the world, be sure that I'm coming soon. I don't know how many more Christmases you and I will have on this earth. But one thing I do know, we will be with Him, the Lord Jesus Christ, in heaven forever. So for me, I'm more concerned about eternity than I am about the short time that we have on earth. But while we're on earth, we are celebrating the birth of the Prince of Peace, the ultimate peacemaker, not peace lover, peacemaker. His name is Jesus. Now, I want to just share with you the most important aspect for me as I get older of Christmas is it's a time of giving. That's exactly right. There's more giving than receiving. I remember many years ago preaching in a church up in Johannesburg and on the wall of that church, in the front of that church, was a big neon sign and it said, missionary work is gratitude for Calvary. People go to the mission field to tell unbelievers about Jesus as a form of thanksgiving for the salvation that they found. You see, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's why I'm sharing the good news with you today. I was lost. I was going down for the last time. I was a sinner. I was destined for hell. And then because of the goodness of God and because of the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ, I found salvation. I found peace. I found redemption. I was redeemed. My sins were forgiven and I was given a brand new start. My dear friend, that's what Christmas means to me. Christmas is all about giving back to God what He gave to us. And what better way than telling others. So that big plaque I saw in that church was wonderful. Missionary work is gratitude for Calvary. And that's why people have left their homes and they've gone to unknown destinations. Many of them have died martyrs' deaths for the sake of the gospel because our Father gave us His Son so that through believing in Him, you and I can have everlasting life. Our sins can be forgiven. We can be healed physically, spiritually, mentally. We can make a new start. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If any man or woman be in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What a gift. And it all started with that little baby that was born in Bethlehem at Christmas time. Now, some of you are sitting there and you're saying to me, Angus, was the 25th of December the actual date that Jesus was born? I don't think so. And I don't know what date it was to be accurate. Some say in, in October. I don't really care. I am celebrating this great occasion, the greatest gift that planet Earth has ever received was when God became man. And He came down to Earth in the form of a baby. You know why? Because He saw that you, madam, and you, sir, were struggling with depression, with fear, with anxiety, with guilt. And He said to His Father, let me go down to Earth and show them how they should live. And so the greatest gift that the world has ever had came down from heaven. So I want to say to you, a very blessed Christmas. And I want to say to you, why don't you go and do likewise? Why don't you go and give a gift to someone else? You say to me, Angus, I don't have any money. Folks, you know, you know some of the finest gifts that I've ever received? Cost no money. 
What kind of gifts are those? A handwritten letter. You know what that means to me? We don't get that anymore. All of us have got cell phones. We've all got uh, iPads or laptops or computers, and we just type out something quickly. But when somebody sits down and takes a pen and writes a heartfelt letter and sends it to me, that means more to me than some fancy gift that you went and bought in the shop. So you can, you, there's always something you can give. What about, um, you know, my wife, she still sews. There's not many people do sewing anymore. Hey, huh, young ladies? <laughs> when that garment tears, you just throw it away and buy another one. Well, I want to tell you, those days are coming to an end because everything is expensive. To get something sewn, a homemade garment, is such a beautiful thing to receive. I know some men that make uh, knives. All men love knives, not just for hunting. Farmers carry knives in their pockets. You know, when we, get, we see in the middle of the field, there's a, a young animal that's caught up in some twine from a, a bale of hay and it can't move. Well, you take your knife out of your pocket and it's nice and sharp and you go and you release it. Or you tie something up. Some people make knives, homemade knives. They've given me knives as gifts. I treasure them for the rest of my life. You might say, well, I can't do that. But you know what you can do? You can go and visit somebody in an old age home. Just have a cup of tea with them. That's all. What a Christmas present. Just pray for them and say, how are you? That's what people want. We can, you know, I remember when I was first saved, we used to take my old lorry. I only had one lorry. The old one that brought us out of Zambia with all my stuff on the back. We cleaned the lorry up. We'd, we'd hose it down, get all the cow dung and the fertilizer and everything out of it. And we'd go to town and we'd load up about 50, maybe 100 people in the back of the truck. And we were so, we were so excited about Jesus. We'd all stand in the back of the truck, put big up homemade railings around the truck. And we'd take carol, sheets of carols and we'd sing carols like Silent Night, like Come All Ye Faithful. And, and we'd go up and down the streets, just driving very slowly and then end up at the hospital and park outside the hospital. And many of the patients would come to the window and you'd see tears running down their faces. And we'd wave to them and wish them a happy Christmas. Folks, those are the gifts I'm talking about. Yes, of course, it's nice to get a, a nice mountain bike or maybe, um, I don't know, a new whatever, whatever. But I'm talking about things of the heart. And, uh, you know, when, when um, my children, when they were small, they would make something at school and bring it home. Now I've got grandchildren. <laughs> They'd be exactly the same. And, you know, when we get those pictures that they make, we take them and I put them up in my prayer room. And I'm so proud of them. And I make sure when they come to visit me, they call me Kulu, which is the Zulu word for grandfather. I'll make sure that they see that the pictures are up and they're so happy about that. I've taught my grandsons to carve. We sit there in the afternoon sometimes and we speak about the things of God. And we make walking sticks. Not just for old people, but for people who like walking. And we carve them and we paint them with varnish. And we put a little, a little brass stop uh, on the end there so it doesn't wear out. And we take a hot iron and we put their names on the side of the walking stick. We are giving. The Lord Jesus Christ said it's more blessed to give and then to receive. Don't you find that? I do. I love giving things. Sometimes you don't have the money, but you can give of yourself. And that's actually what people really want in this day and age. Because uh, everybody's too busy, too busy, too busy. You know, I'm going to speak to the younger people now because maybe you're not familiar with the story. There was a very famous English writer. His name was Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens wrote a book called A Christmas Carol. And in this book, there was a very mean, greedy, selfish self-centered man by the name of Ebenezer Scrooge. He lived in England. Ebenezer Scrooge was so tight with his money, he wouldn't allow his staff, he had quite a big staff, he wouldn't allow them to use heaters to make um, an, a, a nice open fire in the middle of winter 
in uh, England, and they would sit there shivering at night. He wouldn't give them any extra money. He himself would do, he lived in a massive house, but it was very sparsely furnished. I remember him sitting in, when I saw the movie, with a bowl of gruel, which is like runny porridge. That's all he ate. Christmas Eve, he mumbled and moaned because he had to give them a couple of hours off. And the man that worked for him had a large family and he wouldn't give him any Christmas presents, nothing. This man would sit there shivering. He was a clerk. And he had a little boy named Tim, Tiny Tim. And T Tiny Tim was crippled. And he had nothing to do with any of them. He didn't care about them. He said Christmas was a waste of time and a waste of money. And people were walking up and down the street singing carols. He said they're making a noise and they closed down the shutters. And he put his, his nightcap on his head. They used to wear them in those days. That was because the house was so freezing. He wasn't married. He didn't have any family. And he'd get into bed. And he went to sleep on Christmas, night before Christmas Eve. But when he slept, I can't remember the exact story. Some of you watching this know it exactly. He, he dreamt. And he dreamt that he actually died. And... Um, he was actually shown his own grave. There was his gravestone. Ebenezer Scrooge died. And he got a terrible shock. And he saw one of his friends, a partner who was just as mean as him, who had died. And he was walking around with chains hanging around him. And absolutely destitute with a pale, pale, pale colored face. And very, very depressed. And he realized his ugly personality, his, his disrespect for mankind, being a miser, a man that always tried to keep his money, wouldn't give anything to anybody, wasn't interested in anybody, and he was basically on his way to hell. That's actually what the, 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 the story portrayed. But eventually, he woke up in a cold sweat, and it, it was only a dream. And he got such a fright, my dear friend, <laughs> That uh, the next day, he got dressed up and he went down to work. And of course, all his staff were afraid of him because he would shout. And he said, come on, let's make a fire. They made a big fire. They thought he had lost his mind. He went down to the local butchery and he bought the biggest turkey, dressed turkey that he could find. And he went to this clerk and he said, I want you to take this turkey to your family for Christmas dinner tonight. And the clerk couldn't believe his, couldn't believe his eyes. And then he went to that family and he had Christmas with them. And tiny Tim became like his own son. And he spoiled him and he bought him presents. And folks, at the end of the story, Ebenezer Scrooge found life and happiness. And he was taken in by that family and they loved him. And he became like a grandfather to them. I want to say to you, there are many people at Christmas time who have nothing. They have no family, they have no money, and they have no future. But you know something? You can make the difference. You can introduce them to that little baby that was born in Bethlehem. I've been there. And you can tell them the Christmas story. And you can take them a hot meal, or you can bring them to your house, and you can have Christmas with them. Christmas is a time also for restoring relationships. Phone up that loved one, maybe on the other side of the ocean, and say, I want to tell you that I love you. Please forgive me for the argument we've had. Don't go into any details. Don't say whose fault it was. Please forgive me. I want to wish you a blessed Christmas, and I want to tell you I'm praying for you, and I've sent you something in the post. And let's start to build bridges, not only in our home, not only in our business or on the farm, but in our country. Reach across to the other people group. Reach across to the other age group. Young people so desperately need fathers and mothers and grannies and granddads. And old people so desperately need young people in their homes to brighten them up. I've had an invitation to go to a, 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 an old age home. It's got 170 people. And they watch this program all the time. And I'm going to give them a surprise visit. I'm just going to walk in there one day. <laughs> And I can't wait for it because these people amaze me because they've got stories. If you've just got the time to listen to them that are absolute, that keep you in thrall. 
They've been all over the world. They've done amazing things. And now they're tired. And they're sitting quietly. And no one comes to visit them. Let's bring Christmas to them this year. Let's make this Christmas a giving Christmas. Don't be so concerned about what you're receiving, but rather give. Jesus said, it is much more blessed to give than to receive. And when we receive, we receive with joy. And we say, thank you very much. And remember, there are some Ebenezer Scrooges possibly watching this program. I want to tell you, it's never too late to change. Never too late. And just that smile, just that extra gift to that car guard, that extra tip to that waitress, might just make her day. And when people come to you and they say, what's different about you? What an opportunity to tell them about the King of Kings, about Jesus Christ's birthday. I want to pray for you. Maybe you're sitting there watching this program and you're saying, Angus, I'm one of those lonely people and um, I'm not sure of my future. I'm not so sure where I'll go if I had to die today. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray the same prayer that I prayed almost 40 years ago. I remember it exactly. I remember the time. And it's changed my life forever. And you know something? It costs nothing. All you want to do is to receive it. No, no, but I've got to pay for it. No, Jesus already paid for it. All you've got to say, and all I've got to say is, thank you, Lord. So if you're that person, I'd like you to close your eyes, and I'd like you to pray this prayer after me. Will you do that? Let us pray together. Dear Lord, God, pray this after me. We want to thank you for Christmas time. Where would we be without that gift that you gave us? Eternal life, which comes through believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We thank you that Jesus came down from heaven to earth and he paid for all our sins by his very life. We thank you too that we have hope in him because after he was crucified, the third day he rose from the dead and ascended back to his father's house. And we too will do exactly the same. When we die, it will be like walking through a door into eternity. Thank you for the blessed assurance that we have through Christmas, that we will never die, that we will live forever, because we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Well, there we have it. May God bless you. And have a beautiful Christmas season. And make sure that you bless somebody else. Maybe you need to go and pray that very prayer that you've just prayed now with someone else. Maybe somebody who doesn't have a television, not watching this program. Just go and tell them the good news. Until next time, goodbye. Dankie dat jy hierdie weekse episode van Koning Aar met oom Angus Bakken gekyk het. Ons vertrou dat jy daardier geseen is. Vir meer inlichting oor Angus Bakken, Shalom Ministries of komende gebeure, besoek geris www.angusbakken.co.za Jy kan ook die enkel Angus Facebookblad gaan like of volg hom op Twitter. Die selfde lakken van